I need to understand what normal is there. Does that make sense? So where are we right now? Walmart. Walmart, Walmart where? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Where in Las Vegas? In Henderson. Henderson, which is a suburbia of Las Vegas. Now, is the people that live here going to be different than the Walmart two miles, three and a half miles, two and a half miles away from the Strip? Yes. Totally different. Now, let's talk about layout. What is uh, in a parking lot? Where, where do people park? Close yeah, as close as they can get. Um, so who's usually in the very front of a parking lot? Handicapped. Sometimes they have veteran spots. Sometimes they have um, expecting or with children spots. Now, what about the women? Where do they park? Where do you park? What about as close to the front as you can under a light? Do you do that? Consciously yeah, or subconsciously? Light, yeah. But you try to park as close to the front, but if there's a spot open underneath the light, you definitely take it. Yeah. What do the employees park here? They're supposed to park towards the back. So I said, the good employees, the managers, or the ones that want to let the manager see them park, they're gonna park back here. Um, the lazy employees, they're gonna like come in five minutes before they, their shift starts and try to walk right in the door real quick to hit the time card. They're gonna be in the middle area. Where, if there's gonna be kind of a nefarious, illegal act happening in the parking lot, where's it gonna happen? In the back. It's a pretty lit parking lot. I'm happy. So cars are a huge giveaway for people. Um, if you go into Austin, all of the apartment complexes and gated communities have like little stickers that you that are scanned to go into the gate. So there's no keypads really anymore, and there's and they don't hand out um, the garage door opening devices to get in there. So what they have is these little cameras that scan your sticker. Well, that sticker, um, one, I can walk up, take a picture of it, and then go print it on my printer and walk into your gated computer, but it also tells me exactly where you live. And then um, we're in suburbia, so as we're walking around, are we gonna find, hey, my kid's an honor student at Middle Vista Middle School, probably. We're gonna see a couple of little, um, Star Wars figurine stickers on the back with a couple of little tiny ones and maybe even a dog that looks like an AT-AT, -AT, right? So now I know where their kid goes to school, I know how many kids they have, I know what apartment complex they live in, um, I also know what church they go to. I could probably figure out um, the gender of the person and the occupation, their socioeconomic income, and their race just off their car. You guys agree that we could figure that out as we walk around the parking lot? Yeah. Those are things that we're always working, right? When we're, when we're looking, when we're observing, and we're taking in that information, what you wanna be able to do is have that situation awareness open all the time, and you're just taking all of this information in, and the better you get at it, the more picky you get to be about the information. In that awareness, the next thing is assessment. Assessment, I usually add the word threat in front of it, so it's threat assessment. I have awareness all the time, right? I'm looking at where I'm gonna park, where I'm gonna get out, where I'm gonna find a gun. And then when I see something that doesn't fit into that kind of assumed normal average world around me, my perception and the amount of energy that I'm spending being aware of everything kind of starts getting directed at an individual or something that's off. And then I start scrutinizing it a little bit more. So to get good at this, you have to practice it a lot. And we practice it a ton. As Mike and I are sitting there, we look around the room, and they're like, yeah, they're on their first date. <laughs> How cute. Um, we start making assumptions about everybody in the room. Those assumptions, you get really, really good at. And we, we, we both used to work informants, so we're really good at striking up conversations and talking to people. So once we kind of go through the room and figure out who everybody is, what their job is, how much money they have, if they have a gun, if they don't have a gun, what car they're driving, maybe what food they ordered or, or how their interaction is with each other, I'll go up and strike up a conversation to figure out how close we are, how right I am. And like, we get really, really, really good where we're right almost all the time. I've been wrong before, but I get wrong less and less. Let's talk about distance to each other. Do we know each other? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we kind of have like four different distances. You have an intimate distance, which is um, husband and wife, really, really good friends. Um, and then you kind of have like agreeable, aware, 
you know each other, but you're not tight, right? Which is kind of like where this is. This is a comfortable distance for people that know each other. Then you kind of have a business distance, which is here. This is where we're like, um, I'm aware of who you are as a person, but we don't really have a relationship. And then we have the, I don't know you and I don't want you to get any closer than me distance. So as you look around the room and you see the interaction, that's called biometrics. That's how people interact with each other. That's really informative. If I see a guy walking into the parking lot of a football game and he's wearing white prayer robes and he's sweating bricks and he has a bunch of shit around his waist, would I be kind of concerned? Whereas if I saw I'm at the Dallas football stadium and I see a dude with a cowboy star, the cowboy hat, with a cowboy tattoo, you know, with like a cowboy jock strap. Is that normal? Like, that's what I expect to see. And his buddy next to him, as they're walking in, they're like, ah! <laughs> right? Right? That was great. That's gonna be normal interaction between two people. What if they're all dressed appropriately, wearing a shit ton of, of cowboy crap, and, um, and they're like walking like this? Something off, right? Weird distance, weird, not comfortable body motions. So th there's something wrong about what we're seeing that, that, that doesn't add up. You gotta train your eye and your mind to see that. That makes sense? Another thing about predators, they work this way. This is how bad guys think. They look for Jeremiah's. A Jeremiah is a threat. Right? A wolf doesn't want to go to another big ass wolf and be like, hey, what's up wolf, do you want to hang out? They're like, oh, fuck you wolf, I'm gonna go find something easier to deal with like a tiny little retarded deer, right? That's how they work. They don't want to fight with a lion. Like the hyenas are like, oh cool, look, that's like the king of the jungle. Let's go fight that guy. They're like, oh look, that giraffe's like two weeks old and it has little fawn legs and I think it hurt its ankle, so I'll go hang out with that. That's how predators work, and it's no different with humans. The more you study it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Just like anything, just like shooting, just like fighting. Um, the course corrections are kind of opportunistic. So I make, when we were doing this class in uh, New Jersey, where were we last? Utah. Utah, no, the one before that. New Jersey. New Jersey. Um, we were doing this class, and I walked up to a car and I made, all right, this, this is a woman. Um, this is her race. This is how much money she makes. She works somewhere around here. Um, all these assumptions about her. Lo and behold, about 10 minutes later, this girl comes sticking her head out and she's like, what are you guys doing by my car? I'm like, hey girl, what's going on? What do you do? And five minutes later, she confirms every single detail we made about her and her car from her, well, from her car about her. And she was the exact same race, which was black, which was not average for there. Um, her religion, number of kids that she had, where she lived, obviously where she worked. Um, so then I was like, cool, I guess I was right about that. Build, you build a story in your head and you have like yeah, one, two, but, three, four things that but you, you have to have, what I'm gonna be you have to have a now. database to be able to draw the information on. So like somebody sees a Sikh walk out, we're in Dallas and um, do Sikhs look like Muslims? They totally do. Do Sikhs like Muslims? Oh, no, they like really don't like them, right? Um, but it's funny that they're always confused and how the media is like, oh, look at this radical extremist. I'm like, that's a Sikh. Awkward. Um, but you, so as we're looking at these cars in this parking lot, this Sikh family specifically, they owned like the whole entire strip mall behind us. And um, looking at the guy's car, we were able to figure out, well, fuck, this is a really nice car in a strip mall. Um, so it doesn't belong, something's off. So we then find out, or assume that this person um, owns some of these businesses and is either checking in or working on them. And the guy comes out because there's a bunch of people walking around his expensive car in a strip mall in Dallas. And like watching him walk up, you're like, he, he is a very devout Sikh and we're talking to him, confirms everything. But if you didn't know, understand the religion, if you didn't understand the kind of the nuances of the culture, then you wouldn't have anything to make those assumptions in the first place. So you gotta be kind of a smart motherfucker. You gotta read. You have to understand religion. That's one of the biggest motivators for people. Um, you have to understand people, socioeconomic classes, cultures, races, how they work. 
You have to be open-minded about it. Like the worst person in the world at doing this is a racist dick. Like they just can never get it because they're always going to be using their non-objective mind to view the information and make wrong assumptions. So you have to be open-minded and you have to be fair and you have to judge people equally and use that information to rush to judgment about them. Kind of sucks, but that's how it works.